Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about what we call style SBLINE. So if you have uh, used the SOLIDWORKS SBLINE command in the sketch, if you expand it, you see under that there is this thing called style SBLINE. And if you click on it, there is there are two different types of curves other than a regular SBLINE. One is called the Bezier curve and the other one is called BSBLINE. So today, I want to explain these two things for you a little bit mathematically and show you the difference between these and the original SBLINE command. So remember that the original SBLINE command is a polynomial and uh, it passes through each and every one of the control points, right? So, for example, here, if I have these points, right, and if I keep clicking, you see that... Uh, it keeps going through each and every one of them and if I grab any control point and try to relocate it it is gonna affect the entire SP line right so you see here that the entire SP line from the first, the left end point to the right end point everything will be affected correct and the other thing that this SP line has is each piece here between two consecutive points is a polynomial, let's say, for example, a cubic polynomial. It has four coefficients. And so here, let's say if you have four pieces, that means 16 coefficients have to be found by uh, enforcing, let's say, C2 continuity. And C2 continuity means at each point, at each intersection between two curves that are adjacent, not only the curve has to be continuous, uh, the derivatives, the first derivative, and also the second derivative, they have to be continuous as well. That's called C2. If you say C1 means just up to the first derivative, right? So uh, that means you have to find a bunch of what? A bunch of uh, unknown coefficients, which is uh, mathematically uh, basically time-consuming and demanding. And also, since it passes through each and every one of these control points, then if you have a lot of control points, it is going to have lots of oscillations. And so you cannot really use this for interpolations because it uh, typically can do overfitting. Okay? So there are other types of curves, as I said, Bezier and BSB line that I'm going to show you today. And the goal of them that they are parametric curve instead of a curve in terms of unknown coefficients is to first uh, make the drawing of them less computationally demanding. And then by not forcing the curve to pass through each and every one of the points, uh, they can be used for more robust, basically, interpolations in general. Now, the goal in uh, SOLIDWORKS is typically not interpolation, right? But... Um, in mathematics and numerical analysis, they can be used. So let's go ahead and take a look at these first mathematically and describe them. Then we go back and draw them. So a Bezier curve named after the uh, French mathematician Bezier is a parametric curve, which is defined by a set of control points where uh, if you go from P0 to Pn, this N is called the order of the curve. Okay. So if you have, for example, three control points, from P0 to P2, then we call it uh, order 2, or we call it quadratic Bezier curve. If you have uh, four control points, so you go to P3, then we call it order 3, or we call it cubic Bezier curve, okay? So uh, the important thing is this. The first and the last control points always will be on the curve, but not the intermediate ones. So if you look at this curve here, you can see that this red curve passes through P0 and P2, the end control points, but P1, the intermediate one, or the internal, you might call it, this is not on the curve. And similarly, you can see it in this cubic one that P1 and P2 are not on the curve. So only the first one and the last one are on the curve. Okay? Now, when we say it's parametric, so what's the function? So uh, here, for example, uh, I show you three different types of Bezier curves, linear, quadratic, and cubic. So for linear, you can see that it's a function of the parameter t and the two endpoints, p0 and p1. So it is like 1 minus t times p0 plus t times p1, 
where this parameter is between 0 and 1. And clearly, you know, this is the equation of a line between P0 and P1. Because when T is 0, it's just going to be P0. When T is 1, it's going to be P1. And when T is between 0 and 1, it's, a, it's basically what? It's on a line that is connecting P0 to P1. So it's going to be just a simple line, of course, right? As T goes from uh, 0 to 1. And, uh, well, this is easy. There are only two control points, so the whole curve passes through the two control points. But when you have more than two control points, which is typically the case in CAD, uh, then we can go to quadratic, cubic, and so on. So in quadratic, if you see, now you have three control points, and the weights of these control points are like 1 minus t squared p naught plus 2t times 1 minus tp1 plus t squared p Two. Now, if you look here, when t is 0, these two weights, the second and third one, are 0, so you just get p naught. When t is 1, the first one and the second one are 0, so you just get p2. Okay, but when t is between 0 and 1, none of these two coefficients, this one and this one, none of them are 0. So you will never get, for any value of t between 0 and 1, you will never only get p1. In other words, your curve will never directly pass through p1. Okay? You always have a combination of p0, p1, and p2 when t goes between 0 and 1. And that's why, as I said, the curve never passes through p1 perfectly. Okay? So this is the equation of this parametric curve for t of 1, uh, for, uh, sorry, uh, second order. And uh, this is the shape of the curve. Now, let me explain with a few figures that I got from Wikipedia how this curve might be constructed or how you might draw it. Because all you need is to change this t, combine this p0, p1, and p2, which are a 2 by 1 vector, and you get a 2 by 1 vector and you can draw it. You get a point and then you draw it. But uh, if you look at these pictures, they are kind of interesting. So these four pictures are uh, this Bezier curve for t's that are between 0 and 1. And if you look, for example, at t of point 1, look what it does. So here you have this green curve, okay, where... Basically, one end of it is here, one end of it is here. Okay? So basically, you have so much of distance along the line from P1 to P2, and then the same distance on what? From P0 to P1, you uh, separate the same distance. And then you connect these two points together. So the point, the point of interest, is going to be on this line. Okay, and uh, that's this guy here. Then when you go to T of point uh, 32, again, if you look on this line, you have this distance. And then from P1 to P2, you have that distance, which kind of looks similar. You connect them together, you get this line, and then your curve is, uh, your point, your point of interest is going to be on that. Right, and it is going to slide on it, right? It is going to slide on it. Then you go to point 62 again, look at this distance and look at this distance, right? You draw a line, your point is going to be on that. And when you go to point 96, you have this small distance here, or maybe this distance this time and this distance. And you draw that uh, green curve and it's on that. And so you get this uh, Bezier curve like that. Okay? So this is what, this is a quadratic one. And then the cubic one, again, the weights are like 1 minus t uh, cubed times p naught, 3 times 1 minus t squared t, 3 1 minus t t squared, and then t cubed. Right? You can see these weights and... Um, <clears throat> If you look at these weights, uh, something interesting happens, right? So if you add these two weights together, what would you get? You get 1, right? T and 1 minus T. Now, if you add these three weights, what would you get? 
right? Just let's expand it. So it's going to be t squared plus 1 minus 2t. That's the first term. This other one is going to be 2t minus um, positive 2t and then minus 2t squared and plus t squared. And if you simplify this one, we'll cancel with that. These square terms would cancel again. You get a 1. And if you do that, the same thing, add these three, four weights together. Again, the summation is 1. So some of the weights is always equal to 1, right? And that is something that you might need to take a look into. And here is, by the way, that uh, cubic Bezier curve. And in general, you can have a formula for any order Bezier curve, although typically uh, what you do is you form a, a composite Bezier curve if you have more control points and you do not raise this order more and more. Okay? So if you have more control points, then typically uh, you uh, basically form the Bezier curve on all of those points by a bunch of segments, by a bunch of lower order Bezier curve and make it what? Composite one. And this allows you to have your Bezier curve to be C not continuous, C1 continuous, or C2 continuous. Most of the time we choose Bezier curves so they are what? C2 continuous, just like the uh, regular SP lines. Okay? So, uh, and again, what I said is, let's say if I have, for example, uh, five of these control points, right? Like this, then for these three, I can form one, and then I come to these three, and I form another one, and then I come to the last three, which is these guys, and I form another one, and then I make sure by applying uh, correct weights, these three curves are what? They are continuous up to order C2. So you will be probably getting something like this. Okay. I'm not going to go to a Bezier curve of order 4 or 5. I typically try to keep it a combination of uh, uh, smaller order segments. Now, What's the advantage of this Bezier curve over the regular SP line? One is, as we said, the equations that you can see are written in terms of what? In terms of the control points and some parameter t, like this. And you see here, there is no coefficient that you need to find. The coefficients are based on this parameter t, and they are already given ahead of time, so you don't need to do much of a calculation. So the best thing about it is basically it's fast to uh, do it, right? It's fast to draw it. Uh, one other thing that they have is they are completely contained in the convex hull of their control points, okay? What does that mean? Well, here, if you look, look at this case. So, you know, convex hull is the... Uh, polygon that is convex and that is formed by these control points so in this case for these three it's going to be this triangle and you see your curve is absolutely falling with inside what this triangle in this case with these four points this is your convex hole and again you see curve is falling inside and if your points are not all going like a polygon like this they might go something like this as i'll show you in a minute you still see that for these guys, probably a convex uh, hole is going to contain your uh, overall curve, okay? So you have a bound, you know, you have a bound and you know that your uh, curve is going to fall inside that bound. That is an important property. So now uh, let me show you uh, the Bezier curve in SolidWorks. So here we go. Here and say style and then say Bezier curve and now between the same exact five points I want to draw a Bezier curve look what it does so click here then click here then click there then click here then click there 
You see? Clearly, it's not going to pass through the intermediate or internal points. Just first and last one. If I draw these points together and make a convex hole, my curve is inside the convex hole. And you see this guy clearly has a lot less oscillations than the original SV line, of course, because it doesn't have to pass through everything. So in terms of if you ever have to use this for um, interpolation, this guy is in general a more robust uh, interpolation and curve fitting uh, interpolation results it gives you compared to the original one. Plus, this guy, uh, you can draw it fast and um, it doesn't need computation of unknown coefficients. Now, one thing bad about both Espel line and Bezier curve is the global variation that I mentioned for Espel line, that if you grab one point and move it, you see that the entire Espel line is changing shape. The same thing applies for Bezier curve. If I grab here a point, uh, let me grab a point here. Make sure here look if you see clearly again the entire shape is what the entire shape is affected by a single control point right because clearly if you look at these equations if I change p1 to something else the whole function will change and the result of that at when t is 0 or t is 1 or t is anything else right so the effect of change of control points is global not local and that is not always something very desirable sometimes you just want to change a control point and only the shape of the curve locally will change not all over the place and that is something that next we can achieve with bsp lines okay so let's talk about bsp line see what the bsp line is so what is a BSP line? Well, similar to the Bezier curve, BSP lines also are parametric curve. Okay, and again, they are a linear combination of control points and this time some basis functions. So this is the same thing here. If you look at here, a Bezier curve was also a linear combination of what? The control points and what? And some functions that the functions of the parameter. So BSP line is similar to that, except as we'll see, these functions, which we call basis functions, their domains of affecting the total curve is local. So these functions are global. They change from T0 to T1, while in uh, spill lines, we'll see these basis functions are only local functions. Okay, there have so much of a domain of affection or affecting something. So that's the main difference. So here we show the curve by a combination of PIs, which are the control points and the basis functions, N, I, and K. Okay, and your summation goes from I0 to uh, I of N. Now, let's talk about some terminologies here first. So what is n, what is k here? n is what, or n plus 1, is the number of control points. So here, your control points, they go from p naught to pn, just like the previous case. Remember, in the previous case, we called n what? We called n the order of the curve. Here, n, in this case, is the number of control points, or n plus 1 is the number of control points, right? k, on the other hand, is parameter k, we call it the order of the curve. And what does that mean? Well, these guys here, these NIKs, these are basically also polynomials, but again, with so much of domain, and they are all of order k minus 1. So if k is 4, then it means these NIKs are going to be cubic polynomials, Okay, 4 minus 1. And your curve is made of n minus k plus 2 segments. So, for example, let's say what? Let's say you have, like in this case, you have uh, 5 control points. So, n is 4, right? Because uh, it's n plus 1. So, n is 4. And let's say k is also 4, correct? So, we're going to use uh, cubic uh segments or cubic polynomials 
So uh, this is going to be what? This is going to be uh, 4 minus 4 plus 2. So you're going to have two polynomial segments of order 3. So basically, between the first four points, you pass a um, cubic polynomial. Between the second point all the way to the last point, you pass another one. And then you make sure that they are continuous and smooth. Now, one good thing that this guy does is n and k do not depend on each other. n and k could be selected separately. Okay, n and k could be selected separately. So here, uh, I chose four points and I passed cubic, but that could be a coincidence. If I want, I can choose four points, but I pass a what? I can pass a fifth or sixth or seventh order polynomial for each four points. So it's up to me to choose the order of the curve passing through so many points or each segment. And uh, it's not like finding those unknown coefficients. So I need enough coefficients and enough unknowns, right? Uh, enough equations and enough unknowns. I can just choose them separately, ind independently from each other. Another important thing you need to consider is n and k are related to each other by this inequality, that n should be bigger than or equal k minus 1. So in this case, as I said, if n is 4 and k is 4, you're good because 4 is bigger than or equal 3. Okay, but if you have 4 points and you choose this k to go 7, then this inequality will not match. So although, yes, you can choose them, but then you, if you go with too big of a k for too small number of control points, then what you will do is you cannot make sure that smoothness and continuity will uh, exist. Okay? So you need at least the number of control points to be bigger than k minus 1, which is the order of polynomial minus 1. Okay, but what you can do for n, what you can do for k, it's up to you as long as this inequality is valid. Now, what are these basis functions? What's the shape of these basis functions? So these basis functions kind of look like this. They are not global functions. They are only local functions. They go from somewhere to somewhere, and then they stop. They become zero. So each one of them, as I said, they have a local effect, not a global effect. Okay? That's the important thing. Now, what's the criterion for them? I'll show you how to find them and so on. But I want you to see that the first thing is these basis functions are only local functions. So kind of, you see, kind of like a Gaussian function, right? So, um, now, the thing is, these basis functions, they go from where to where. Well, these basis functions are defined over what we call a knot vector. The knot vector here is a bunch of numbers in a non-decreasing manner. So, as you go from left to right, the numbers get bigger and bigger, where the first one is called t naught t1 all the way to tn plus k. Okay? So these are those uh, knot vectors. And what is a knot? Knot is where these polynomials are going to meet. Knot is where these polynomials are going to what? Meet. Now, some knots are on the left side and on the right side, and some knots are in the middle. Okay? So uh, one of the things you can do is... Some of these knots, some of these junctions of the polynomials, you can keep them in the first point, first control point. Some of them you can keep at the last control points, and then any T, any knot in between, we call them internal knots. So one thing different here that you can do, and that is interesting, is the knots, the T values, can have multiplicity. That's another major factor that you have, a control that you have in BSP lines. What does multiplicity mean? Means at one of these control points, you can have several of these knots coincident. You can have several of these knots to fall on the same point. They should not all necessarily be different from each other. Some of them could be what? Could be the same as each other. Right? So you can have equal knots in the beginning and at the end. 
And what's the use of that? Why would you have multiplicity of the knots here? Well, the multiplicity allows you to control what? The continuity of the curve at that point. So in general, if you have a knot with multiplicity of P, where P is less than or equal K, then the curve at that point is going to be up to C, K minus P minus 1, continuous, okay? So for example, let's say K is what? Let's say K is 3, right? And uh, P is 1. So you have a multiplicity of 1, then what? Then you have C to the 3 minus 1 minus 1, C to the 1 continuity. So basically means the slopes at those uh, knots are all going to be what? As long as you have multiplicity of 1. Now if P is 2 and K is 3, then it's going to be C to the 0. So the curve is just going to be continuous, but not the first or second derivative. If P is 0, then you can have up to what? No multiplicity at all then you can have, in general, up to C2 continuous, okay? Now, at the end point and at the uh, beginning point, the multiplicity does some help. What is the help of that? What does it do for you? Repeating the knots K times at the beginning or at the end will force your control polygon, the polygon that is passing through what? passing through the control points, will force that to coincide with the endpoints. So here, let's say k is what? k is um, 4. If I have a multiplicity of 4, you see each there are 4 t's at the beginning and the end. If I do that, then I make sure this polygon will pass through what? Will pass through the first control point and the last control point okay now let's go back and talk about some extra material these knots if the distance between them all of them is constant if they have the constant distance we call them uniform or cardinal bsp lines that's another terminology i want you to know uh, I told you that each one of them is like a local function. Another thing you can see that is if you add these uh, basis functions at any point, the summation is going to be 1. Just like this case here where I added these coefficients, right, these t coefficients, when I add them at any point it was 1, the same thing happens here. At any point, if you add the values of what? at any point, at any t, if you add the values of the non-zero basis functions, right, if you add this to that, that summation should be equal to what? To 1. And again, they are only what? Non-zero for a t between so much and so much, like here between ti and ti plus k. So you see, for example, look, your n13 is only non-zero between what and what? Which two t's? Look, look at this. It's only valid between what or non-zero between uh, N1, which is, or T1, which is this, and then 1 plus 3, which is what? 4. You see, it's only non-zero between T1 and what? T4, which is this formula up here. Otherwise, they are going to be equal to what? They are going to be equal to 0. So this is their basis, uh, basin, basically. This is their uh, domain of uh, affection. Uh, outside that, they are zero. Good. So now, how do you find these um, basis functions? These basis functions, uh, you can find them from what we call Cox de Boer recursion formula. Okay. And by the way, the control points in BSP lines, they also might be called de Boer points. So if you ever hear the word de Boer points, these are the same with the name of the control points here. Because uh, De Boer is the person who basically started this thing and uh, he formulated it. So Cox-De Boer recursion formula is a recursive formula for creating what? For creating these n, i, and k's. It says at k of 0, at the lowest order, k of uh, 0, 
the function is very similar. They are just ones. So instead of having these guys, they're going to be just basically a bunch of what? A bunch of lines at a one. So they are not going to be like this. They are going to be functions like this. But as the k is increasing, as the order of these polynomials increasing, this is the recursive formula for it. And uh, I don't want to expand it in this video. But you see that n i k is written in terms of n of i k minus 1. So if you have 0 k of 0, you can go to k of 1. And uh, also you need of n i plus 1 and k minus 1. Okay, so for example, n let's say 2n1 is written as something times what? n 2n0 and something else times what? times n 3n0. Yes, and when I have these zeros, then I can go ahead and go to k of 1, then I can go to k of 2, and recursively I can go to higher orders of polynomials, okay? So this is the formula for it, and again, uh, my goal here is not to expand this and draw, uh, basically solve for some higher order things, but you will get these kind of bell-shaped curves, mostly. In the beginning and at the end, your curves, uh, if you have a curve, sometimes the curves look like this. In the beginning and at the very end, they are only like that, okay? So if you see those kind of curves, the very beginning and very end, they are only for beginning and the end of the um, basis functions. Now, we said all this about uh, BSP lines. What's the advantage of BSP lines, right? Because clearly, uh, finding these NIKs ahead of time, right? You need to do some computation or you need to have them stored somewhere so you can call them and use them. So this is clearly more complicated than Bezier, but what does it give you? What's the advantage of this BSP line? Well, let's take a look at the advantage. First thing is, BSP lines allow local control as opposed to what? Cubic and Bezier curves, right? Okay, this is very, very important. Each polynomial, each segment is only controlled by K control points. So the biggest thing for these guys, as I said, is local control as opposed to global control. So if I go here and uh, I create a Bezier curve order 3 degree 3 or a BSP line, I'm sorry, a BSP line order 3 or 5 or 7, look what happens. So here I draw the BSP line order 3 and I get this guy. Clearly, again, you see that what? you see that uh, it does not pass through the internal control points. It can or cannot pass through what? Through the first and the last control points. So unlike Bezier curves, you can even have it such that it does not pass through the first one and the last one as well. You can have it not pass through them. Well, how would you ensure that it passes? Well, I just explained it. The way to ensure that the curve passes through the first one and last one is to have multiplicity of the knots at the beginning and at the end. If you have this multiplicity, then you can ensure that it passes through first one and last one. And that kind of BSP line, we call it what? We call it clamped SP line. So the SP lines that are generated in SOLIDWORKS, they are clamped. They always pass through first one and last one. But that's not necessarily the case. You can have it such that it doesn't go through this too. So it could be something like this, for example. Right? If you don't have sufficient multiplicity of knots at the beginning and the end, it could be something like that. But as I said, the main advantage here is the um, local control. So let's grab this point and move it. Uh, let me grab it. It's here. Look, if you see, and now here, you don't have enough control points to show that, so uh, maybe I need to add a little bit more control points. Okay, let me add more control points so you can see it better. 
because here I only have two sections. So uh, let me add some more that can demonstrate my point a lot better. So now look here, if I grab this and I try to move this, If you look at this right area and this left area, they are not affected at all by moving this guy. Look at that. You see? It's only this section here that is going to be affected, not this guy, not this guy. Look. You see? These guys are like pinned down completely. So this is that local effect that is very important. And you don't see that in regular SP lines, and you don't see that in what? In Bezier curves. In this uh, SP line here, if uh, I add more control points, right? Still, you can see that it is going to um, have global control when I move a control point. Look. Add some more control points. Okay, so you see here I added more control points, and now let's move one of them, see what happens. You see? Look at this left one. It's not huge, but still does change. Still does change. Okay? You clearly can see that. But here, it's like zero. So the most important thing is local control. Okay, this is the other point that I explained to you, that they do not have to pass through any of the control points. If we force them through the first one and last one, we call it clamped. One other thing they have is uh, the convex hole of BSP lines are tighter than the zero curves. And this is interesting. So they are still inside the convex hole, just like Bezier curves. They are confined into their convex hole, but the convex holes are tighter. So they're going to get less space, and that is interesting. So for that, here I want to show you on this right side, I have the same points. And on the top one, I'm going to pass a Bezier curve. And on these bottom ones, I'm going to pass as the lines, and we're going to see what? We're going to see the shape of the convex hole. So let's pass a bezier here. Start from here, and then go up. And uh, look at the shape of the curve. So look here, how it is. Now here, I'm going to go to um, BSP line order 3. So you can see that one. And hopefully you can see that right now, that here the curve has more offset from the control points. Here is much closer to the control points. So your curve is passing much closer to the control points compared to here. And here, if I want to define a, a convex hole to contain the curve, that is going to be smaller compared to here. You might say, well, they have the same control points. True, but I can always define a convex hole here for the top one and the bottom one that contain them. And uh, clearly, the bottom one is going to be tighter, right? Because you clearly can see that um, all I need is basically to create an offset version of this control polygon with a small offset, right? And make sure that it passes the curve is contained through that. Now, you might say, what happens when the order goes up? So if I go up the order, instead of order 3, I go to order 5. Let's take a look what happens. Now, look. Remember that was 3. This is what? 5. And then let's do a 7.
Okay, so now if you look, you'll see that here the Titus is 3, basically. Okay, so the order here is going to affect what? The tightness of the curve or the closeness of the curve to the control points, and order 3 is uh, closer. Okay, so that is the effect of the order on the tightness. But compared to, if you compare this guy to that, you clearly see that it is tighter than that in general, if the order is not very high. What else do I have to talk about, finally? Are BSP lines and Bezier curves related to each other? Yes, they are. Actually, from Bezier curves, you can make BSP lines, but in general, BSP lines are like the generalized version of uh, Bezier curves because... Uh, Bezier curves don't have as much um, control over the curve as BSP line do. I can show you that the BSP line is, if you have a BSP line with no internal knots and the end notes repeated K times, so it's clamped, so a clamped BSP line with no internal knot is going to be a Bezier curve. So here I show you that if you have four control points and you want to draw a non-clamped BSP line between these four points, you can do it using Bezier curves as well. And as I said, they are related to each other. So uh, how would you do that? So here are these four control points that are connected by the lines. You break each one of these lines into three equal parts. So like these three are equal to each other. Those three are equal to each other, and these three are equal to each other. Then, if you connect this point to this point like that, and find the middle point, and you connect this guy to this one, and again find the middle point, then now you have four new control points, which are these four. And if you draw a cubic Bezier curves between these four points, which is this red curve, that red curve is a BSP line between the original four control points, which is not clamped, which does not have what? Multiplicity. And it does not have to pass through these two. All right? So this is, again, this is the Bezier curve for these guys, or that is the BSP line for what? For these guys which is not clamped. Finally, since I mentioned everything, there are two terms I just want to mention. I don't want to go through them mathematically today because they are complicated and they take time. One is PSP line, if you ever hear that, and the other one is NURBS. So what is PSP line? PSP line is a BSP line which is penalized. So what does that mean? means that the BSP line, the coefficient that it has, are determined partly by the data to be fitted and partly by some penalty functions for lack of a smoothness or having too much a smoothness to avoid overfitting. So basically, these relations here that you have it's not going to be that simple that you just have the control points and the uh, basis functions. You have some extra terms here, and those extra terms are not, uh, in those extra terms, you don't see the control points. Those extra terms are there to impose a penalty on so much of a smoothness, if you have too much of it or if you don't have enough of it. Okay, so uh, this basically has extra terms, and you can control the amount of smoothness of the curve, okay? So it's called PSV line. The other thing is called NURBS, which is used in computer-aided graphics and design. It's a, another extension version of BSP lines, and NURBS means non-uniform rational BSP line. Non-uniform means the distance between the knots is not the same. They are not all equidistant. And rational is a separate thing that I don't want to get into it, okay, related to homogeneous coordinates and so on. But 
What they are is, they are similar to a PSP lines, but with some extension. What is that? So they have the order, they have the not vector, they have the control points, but the control points, they have a weight. So instead of having this, where the control points are directly multiplied by these shape functions, they also have a weight multiplied to them, which allows more control over the local shape of the function okay? and the importance of these different control points okay? on the local shape. So each control point can change the local shape differently instead of all similar. So uh, hopefully this video was useful to you. That's longer than a typical video that I would like to make. But uh, typically explaining a Bezier curve alone or a BSV line alone needs uh, an hour or more of a lecture just to know what they are. So here I did not go super deep in them. I just want you to know what they are. And I want you to know how to use them and what is the effect of them in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, style SB line. Okay. And remember that you can right click on a regular SB line and you can convert it to what? To style or you can convert a style to a generic SB line. But if you convert a, um, a style to generic or generic to style, the conversions are different. So here, look, if I convert this to style, it says, hey, it is an approximation of the original curve. So the new style that you will get is not going to be the original one. It's just going to be an approximation. Do you want to continue? You say yes. Okay. And then it says the dimensions and the relations and everything are dropped. Still okay? Say yes. And now look. It did convert your what, your SP line into this style SP line. You see clearly these lines connecting the control points. And now the good thing is, look here, you see, it's like a BSP line. So when I change this portion, the rest of the SP line is not affected, right? So you can always convert a regular SP line into what? A BSP line if you can tolerate some approximation. Now, can you go back? Yes. So here, let's say I have this, I right click here and I say what? Uh, convert it to the regular SP line. Look, okay. So now you see here, it added these control points for you and passed it through it, although you still have this guy, but if you look, I cannot really, let me go back, I cannot really grab these uh, uh, lines and I cannot really uh, change these lines. I still can grab these control points, these uh, original ones, but not the lines anymore. The lines are, you cannot like this, you cannot select the lines and control it. So you can go from a style back to a regular one. Okay, hopefully the video was useful to you and I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.